Welcome, everybody. We are so happy to have you joining us today for Simple Summer Dishes with Nina Safar, Instagram influencer and cookbook author of the Simply Kosher Cookbook. Um, I'm Jessica Jablon, California Program Co Coordinator here at Charcheret. For those of you who don't know about Charcheret, we help women and families facing breast and ovarian cancer, as well as those who are at elevated genetic risk through free, confidential, and personalized support and resources. We also provide health education throughout the country. One of our goals during COVID is to make sure that we are offering healthy living and cancer prevention information to you during this time and giving you what support you need. In addition to our virtual services that can be found on our website or by emailing us, you can also access prior webinars on a range of cancer-related topics, as well as access our calendar of upcoming virtual programs through our website. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted on Charcheret's website along with a transcript. Participants' faces and names will not be in the recording. If you would like to remain private, you can turn off your video and rename yourself, or you can call into the webinar, and instructions for both of those are in the chat now. You may have noticed that all participants were muted upon entry. Please keep yourself on mute throughout the call. If you have questions for Nina, put them in the chat box either publicly or click on share, share it in the chat box to submit a private question and they will be asked throughout the program. We are thrilled to be bringing you a new season of share, share it in the kitchen, an initiative in partnership with Cedar sinai here in Los Angeles to empower those of us at risk for breast and ovarian cancer to make healthier diet choices. You should have received the recipes for today's program in advance. My colleague is going to put the link in the chat so you can download it and print it or, or just see it on your screen. Thank you to our generous sponsors, Cedar sinai the Cooperative Agreement, DP191906 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, I, AZI, GSK, Merck, CGEN, and the Sigmund and Edith Blumenthal Memorial Fund. It is thanks to their support that we are able to continue to provide our series of webinars throughout the pandemic. Today, I wanna to share a little bit about our caregiver resources available through our Spungen Foundation Family Focus Program. We understand that breast cancer and ovarian cancer are diseases that affect the entire family and community. From the time someone hears, uh, from the time someone hears that their wife, partner, daughter, sister, mother, or friend has been diagnosed, they may be overwhelmed with a rush of feelings and the flood of information available. And COVID has brought new challenges to caregiving. Our Spungen Foundation Family Focus Program helps you support your loved one. You can speak directly and confidentially with one of our skilled social workers about your personal questions and request a free caregiver information packet that includes resources from Charcheret and other cancer organizations to help you understand the diagnosis and treatment of breast and ovarian cancer and the support options available to you. More information about our Spungen Foundation Family Focus Program can be found on our website. And my colleague will put the link in the chat. So before we get cooking, I wanna introduce you to Michelle, who's going to be sharing her personal story with us. I think Michelle, you're on mute. Oh, you can't get off of mute? Okay, so let's fix that. Sorry, everybody. All right, there we go. All right, hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Michelle Weiss, and I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. I, I'm BRCA negative, and no one in my family, immediate family has been a victim of any type of cancer, let alone breast cancer. I was never a smoker. I, did not abuse alcohol or, or substance, other substances. I always ate regular and healthy meals, including many fruits, vegetables, lean meats, and fish. I regularly exercise. I've never been obese. I breastfed all four of my children. I always went for annual gynecological exams, which included a manual breast exam. But what's also on the list is that I'm a breast cancer survivor. My profile would indicate that I was at a relatively low risk for having breast cancer. And because of this, I neglected to get mammograms for four years. I didn't think I was at risk. My gynecologist would give me the mammogram orders and I, and I stupidly just ignored them. I went for a mammogram after skipping the four years and the mammogram discovered a cancerous lump in my breast. 
This was shocking to me and I just couldn't believe that it could happen to me. After going through a lumpectomy and biopsy, my breast cancer was staged at 3A. What this meant was that I had to have chemotherapy in addition to radiation. It was very overwhelming. The surgery also discovered that I had LCIS, <clears throat> which is not technically cancerous. It's, it's something that you find. Um, it's not a disease. It's, it's something that you find in the breast, but it's an indicator that I had a high risk of having breast cancer again and possibly on the other side. Genetics is not the only indicator of breast cancer risk. The recommendation was for a double mastectomy, which I also went through along, of course, with major reconstruction. <clears throat> Had I gone for my annual mammograms, the cancer would have been discovered sooner and I could have spared myself the miserable experience of going through chemotherapy. But I, not, it's not just me, I also could have spared my family. At the time, <clears throat> my kids ranged in age from 11 to 18. It was difficult for them to see their mother going through cancer treatment, and I had less time to devote to them because of the toll that the treatment took on me. Of course, it also put a burden on and took a toll on my husband, who very fortunately was wonderfully supportive through it all. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to go for annual mammograms. It frightens me to think how much worse the situation could have been had I skipped another year. Please learn from my mistakes. Don't assume you are not at risk for breast cancer. I encourage you to please go for your annual mammograms and to encourage other women you know to do the same. And thank you for supporting Shoshere. Thank you so much, Michelle. We're so you know, grateful that you are sharing your story and it's so important and we are just um, such an important reminder to go out and take care of your annual screenings. Um, we are very excited now to introduce Nina Safar, known on social media as at Kosher in the Kitch. Nina is a cookbook author, food blogger, and founder of kosherinthekitch.com. She was raised in a big Brooklyn family with nine sisters and two brothers, full of love for food and tradition. She now whips up quick and easy recipes full of flavor with her two sons standing by for snacks at her home here in Los Angeles. Nina, welcome to Share Shared in the Kitchen, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for that introduction. It's my pleasure and honor to be doing a cooking demo with Share Shared. I am a cookbook author. I've been running my food blog for over 10 years now, but really my journey in the kitchen started a long time before that. When I was a senior in high school, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was very devastating as a family, my siblings and I, and her to, to watch her go through that. Uh, she was, the best way to describe her is uh, like a cheerleader and speed. <laughs> she was a kindergarten teacher and there were 11 of us and every day after school, we would come home to home-baked goods and really wonderful, delicious dinners and every Shabbat, her challah and there's babka. So for us to, Go from that to have, you know, watch her spend the year in chemo, in radiation, having takeout or meals from other people, which was really sweet, but it wasn't our mother's cooking. It was very depressing and we really felt like cancer had taken over the house. And I remember it was really frustrating for me. I, I couldn't make my mother feel better. I couldn't take away her pain. But I remember one day I was 17 and I was like, I went to the kitchen and I was like, I'm going to cook Shabbos. And I always spend a lot of time with my mother in the kitchen. I love food. <laughs> I was always the daughter. There's nine of us and I was the one in the kitchen with her. I wanted the food as soon as it came out of the oven. So I kind of was familiar with a lot of the food that she would cook. And I, I'll i never forget that first time kind of, you know, making Shabbat as I had watched her. And um, once memory, I just remember, I remember crying over the chicken soup because she did not have chicken scissors and it was so hard to get the chicken fat off the chicken and I just remember thinking like all my friends are celebrating their senior year and I'm trying to get chicken fat off of chicken and uh, it wasn't a great day but that night Friday night dinner watching my family for the first time since my mom had gotten sick watching them eat her recipes and her food and passing the food around and seeing them smile uh, it was the first time that we kind of felt like things were going to be okay and it was in that moment where I realized food is magic a home-cooked meal and the power it has to connect and heal, it's just magical. And I decided then and there to cook 
until my mom got better, until she was able to cook again. I cooked dinner, I cooked Shabbos. And that is where my love for food and feeding people and hosting, that's where it comes from. Since then, I've experimented a lot in the kitchen. I, you know, from there, I, I developed my blog and my cookbooks, but my, my love for simple, easy cooking, because I learned how to cook when I was in high school and I was dealing with tests and taking care of my younger siblings. I didn't have time to fuss around and that hasn't changed. I'm not going to lie and say since then, I don't get blissed out moments in the kitchen. I don't like cooking. I just, I love feeding my family and my loved ones. I love eating good food. And so all of the recipes that I create for my blog, for my cookbook and the recipes that we're going to cook today, they're all just easy. They're easy and they're delicious because when I'm creating a recipe, that's what I want. I want it to taste good and I want it to be really easy. The recipes that we're doing today are perfect. They're easy enough for a weeknight dinner, but they taste really great. And as you see, they'll look really nice. You're going to want to cook them when you're hosting, um, whether it's Shabbat or the holidays that are coming. The I don't know which one to start because we've got three things, um, but I kind of want to start with the, the main, the salmon. Sorry, what was that? I was going to say, we're very excited to hear about all the different recipes that you're cooking. There's been a little bit of, in the chat, of people having a little bit of difficulty hearing hearing you. So I don't know if, um, oh, if maybe a little bit closer to the, to the mic, but, um, but whatever you start with, we're okay. excited. Great. Can they hear me now? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a little bit better, yeah. Okay. I have it set further apart because once I start start cooking I'm gonna tilt it and I want you to really see the food um, but for now I'll keep it like this um, I want to start off with the salmon dish because I feel like this really will give you an idea of how I create my recipes and how easy it is for you whoever's cooking whoever's watching how easy it is for you to get in and in the kitchen and put together a really easy simple meal um, I spent so this by my dad I was making the holiday for him and cooking meal the meals for him a lot of siblings, a lot of grandkids are in the house. And I feel like a, like a real Jewish mama, I was like, there's not gonna be enough food. Even though I made all the traditional filter fish, my fried filter fish with onions and the baked, and there's plenty of food, but I was still like, well, what if it's not enough? So I opened up the fridge and I grabbed salmon <laughs> and lemon, tomatoes and dill. And I put together this like quick dish that was really meant for in case people were still hungry. And the funniest thing is that it was the main the main hit of the menu. Everyone loved it. They liked it so much, I ended up making it for the second days of Sukkot. And I've been cooking it all year round. It's a really easy, simple weeknight dinner. But again, it looks nice and it tastes great. So you're gonna wanna serve it when you're hosting. Um, so that random, I don't know if there's enough food, <laughs> turned into uh, one of my favorite recipes. And I don't know, I can, I only see like four people on the side. I'm not sure who's watching, who's actually cooking, but I'm going to, I'm going to pretend that people are cooking with me. If you're not, let me do the work. That's fine. I'm okay with that too. Uh, but if I'm just going to pretend that you're cooking and, and do it step by step so that if you are cooking with me, you'll see how easy it is. So I have got a large piece of salmon lined on a, it's on a parchment lined baking sheet. And I'm gonna tilt the I'm gonna tilt the, the screen now so you can see the food. And then I'll come back and say hi after. <laughs> Hold on just a moment. Okay. Perfect. Does everyone see? Okay, great. So take a large piece of salmon, place it on a baking sheet with parchment paper. You can also make this dish using individual single pieces of salmon, but if you're gonna host it, if you're hosting a couple of people, I recommend a larger piece of fish because you'll see at the end. It looks so pretty and it's so easy. My favorite part is that it's easy. <laughs> okay, so start off with your fish and then you're just gonna drizzle some olive oil on top. You can also use coconut oil or avocado oil if that's what you want. And then you're going to sprinkle some salt and pepper on top. And then I just like to brush it to make sure it gets everywhere. You can add any other spices you'd like, but I really like the lemon dill tomato topping and so I don't like to use any other seasoning. I want that to be kind of like the main flavor but you can easily add any other stuff that you like. Now this is going to be the really fun part. We're going to layer the ingredients on top and you'll see like this. We are just going to take thinly sliced tomatoes. Uh, you want to get them as thin as you can. It will cook better 
faster, quicker, evenly, and it also looks really pretty. And then it's easier to eat afterwards. Next up, we're really just lining up tomatoes and lemons. And it's super easy, but it's gonna be so flavorful and look nice. So we're just gonna do that until it's finished. If you wanna do this, let's say it's like you're just cooking for yourself or two people and you don't want a big slice of salmon. If you're gonna do individual pieces, I would just alternate lemon and tomato because you're not gonna have like a big piece of fish and that would also be great. But I really like the way it looks like this as one large piece. Okay, so we're just gonna finish up layering it. And in the meantime, by the way, cause I can see the screen. If you have, if anyone has any questions, feel free to let me know or if they have comments. It, it, I just love how easy and beautiful it looks. You know, uh, right? it's pretty. Very simple. And yeah. it's healthy, it's just like, just a few ingredients and you have this really beautiful dish. Okay, so once you've got your vegetables lined up, by the way, if you want, you can also add like thinly um, sliced squash, any vegetable that you can slice thin that would cook in the same amount of time would work. But I personally just like the flavors of this and how pretty it looks, colors. Okay, now- um, There's a question- We're gonna take fresh, yeah. There was a, a question that came in. Yeah. Um, but people were admiring how festive the salmon looks, but they were also wanting to know if it's really necessary to drizzle oil on the fish because salmon is a fatty fish as it is. Um, honestly, it's just how I do it. I just, <laughs> I've done it that way. But the truth is, if they want, they could, they could leave that out. This is, I just, that's how I started it and I've kind of done it that way. Uh, but they're definitely welcome to skip that if they don't want the extra oil. I just like doing a little bit with the spices as the layer underneath because I just feel like it kind of like locks in that flavor and makes it a little crispy and, and, and extra flavorful. <laughs> but they could definitely, if they want, they can try and leave it out. Um, next mm -hmm. up, really simple, we're just going to take freshly chopped dill. Usually I'll say like with certain ingredients, with certain recipes, you could definitely use frozen, but for this, I really like fresh. And you're just gonna put it on top like that. You can put as much as you want. I, just, I love the smell of fresh dill and I like the way it looks. So I, I kind of go overboard, I, I do it a lot. And that is it, like that's how that's, easy it is. Wow, that's so easy. Um, somebody was wondering if you can use skinless. See? And I'm gonna show uh, can you use skinless salmon? Yes, I, yes, absolutely. I, okay, here, sorry, I'm going to bring my face back up. I don't want to get my, I'm moving the salmon so I don't my hair in it. Hold on. I, you could definitely use that. I, honestly, when I'm shopping, often, if it's not going to have an effect in the taste, I'm always going to go for whatever's cheaper. And so, big piece of salmon with the skin on, it's cheaper. And so, um, I go for that. And once it's cooked, it easily comes off. But if you want to do it without the skin, you could definitely do that as well. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's cooked. So then you're just going to literally, that's it. And you can throw it in the oven. And I'm going to show you what the other one looks like. Hold on. I'm just going back and forth so I'm going to be able to see it. So this one is ready baked and it's ready. And you're gonna, when I serve it, I like to just put it on a platter with some dill. It looks, Can you guys see that? Yeah. That's it. And then also, um, I suggest when you serve this, if you want to have it with some lemon sauce, which is just some mayonnaise and fresh lemon juice and fresh dill. So people, I would serve it like on the side and then people can just take whatever they want and just it on top. But that's it. That's super simple and easy. And hold on. Oops. Did everyone get a good look? <laughs> yeah, it looks so beautiful, like all cooked and, and the colors. You've got a, a, somebody's giving you a thumbs up. Can the salmon be served room temperature? Yes. So definitely, like, okay, if you're serving it during the week, it would, you know, Usually when I'm serving it during the week for dinner, it'll be warm, but I have definitely served that leftover Shabbos lunch. So I will take it out of the fridge and keep it on the counter and it tastes delicious. 
it, 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 it works both ways. Um, kids love it. Like when I made it for Sukkis, I literally, it was just like a random, like, let's see if there's enough to on a food. Kids loved it. Adults loved it. There were no leftovers. And that has become one of my favorite easy ways to make salmon. Um, I'll be making it Rosh Hashanah. Like I just, it's always like a staple. Like I'm like, it's on the menu. That's Next up, we're going to uh, make the salad. Oh, somebody just wanted confirmation on the, the time it takes to cook it and the temperature. Um, and uh, on okay. the, so uh, 350 for eight to 25 minutes. So I, I do, okay, so I cook it on 350. A lot of times I know you could cook salmon higher temperature for a shorter amount of time. The reason I don't do that is because what I'm prepping, especially if it's for like a holiday or Shabbos, I have a lot of stuff in my oven and I will forget it and I'll burn it. So <laughs> if you like cooking it on a higher temperature, whether it's 450, 500 for like smaller amount of time, go for it. I feel like 350 is a safe temperature. Whatever's in the oven, it's not gonna burn. And I'll cook it anywhere from 18 minutes to 25, 30 minutes, depending on how large the salmon is. What I like is when the outside is slightly crispy and the inside is still like really tender and flakes easily. And um, with this topping, because usually if I make my salmon spice without the topping, the topping will get uh, crispy. It's not gonna actually get super crispy with this because it has the vegetables. So once the outside has kind of like, uh, looks like this, should I, should I show it again? Or, or <laughs> whenever it's ready, according to your oven. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab the next dish. Um, but also, Thank so you. if anyone that has any questions uh, that don't get answered during this demo, my inbox is always open. I say this, but I really mean it. Feel free to email me. If you go to Kosher in the Kitchen, I have a contact section. Um, if you're on Instagram, Kosher in the Kitchen, my inbox is flooded with, I get so many messages from strangers. I always tell people what I'm doing in class. I'm so happy to, to answer your questions because I'm already answering people's questions. I'm already talking about food all day. So never feel bad to just send me a message. I don't always know the answer. And if not, I'll help you figure it out. Um, but I, well, one of my favorite things to do though, is to help people come up with ways to enjoy my recipe in a way that they can adapt to their diet. So if you, um, are grain free or sugar free or whatever it is, like I'll help you eat something delicious because everyone should be able to enjoy good food. <laughs> um, the next dish that we're going to make all of these kind of work if you're having like one meal together, right? You can have the salad, which we're doing second, but you can have the salad and the salmon and the dessert, but they also work on their own. This salad, if you're gonna serve it for Shabbat or if you're gonna serve it like with the salmon, keep it as is. If you wanna be able to enjoy it on its own as a meal, all you have to do is add grilled chicken or tofu if you chicken if you don't wanna eat meat. Uh, crumble feta, goat cheese is delicious. Those are, real, tuna would be great on top of it. Um, if you're gonna have it with the salmon, flake that salmon and add it on top of the salad, and it's so yummy. Uh, so you could definitely also enjoy this salad as its own, um, but it's also a great starter to the meal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you down again so you can see the food. <laughs> Hold on, just a moment, okay. Is there a particular type, Nina, is there a particular type of salmon that you use? Do you use fresh or wild or? Um, again, honestly, like single mom on a budget, when I'm at the grocery store, I'm like, whatever's on sale or whatever is the most affordable. Um, that's how I shop. It's so great that the, that it, it's, it's such a simple, easy recipe that it really sounds like it works for any kind of salmon. Oh yeah. You could definitely do that with any type of salmon. Oh, I thought they were asking me what I personally buy in the store. You can, if you have a preference for a type of salmon, then go for it. Um, and this salmon recipe um, is kind of similar to, in my cookbook, I have a recipe for Greek salad stuffed salmon. And it's very similar. It just has a couple of other ingredients like olives and feta that you stuff the salmon with. And you can, you can do that as well. Um, but this one I kept dairy free because I specifically made it for a holiday meal. So you can have it with like your meat courses. Um, but there are so many ways you can like kind of beef it up and make it like a whole yummy dish. Okay. So I just want to show you the, here you are. Okay. So next up, we are going to make my Mediterranean couscous 
salad. It's kind of basically just like uh, pumped up Israeli salad. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna show you, this is, this is everything. That's everything that's inside it. And I'll show you step by step how to make it. I'm gonna move everything to the side. Just trying to keep the, there, oh, perfect. I feel like you see it perfect, okay. So first we're going to start off with a simple Israeli salad, which is going to be diced, super as small as you can get it. I always joke in my family, my sister, my sister Muski, um, there's nine of us and we've all got our strength. She is the queen of Israeli salads because she has the patience to dice them up. If she's, if you're watching now, Mushki, I hope you're proud. I usually don't have the patience to get it super small. I, <laughs> I like big, big chunks, but because we're having the demo now, I wanted you to see. So I was like, if, if she lived closer, I would have had her prep for me. So we've got, um, cucumbers, tomatoes. Again, I just really love how each recipe is just a few ingredients and you get something really fresh and tasty. So for this part, we've got the diced onions, tomatoes, cucumber, and some fresh lemon juice, parsley. Here, I'm gonna add some chopped parsley. And then a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Um, okay, and then we're gonna mix that together. And, and I'm gonna show you. So this part is just really, it's just a basic Israeli salad. But when you add the chickpeas and the couscous, it becomes like a really full meal. And like I said, um, if you're not gonna have this part of a meal, if it's not going to be in the beginning of a meal, like if it's going to be its own dish, then you can definitely add thinly sliced grilled chicken on top. You can add crumbled feta if you want, or goat cheese. So that's it. Super simple. So that's that. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how pretty it's going to look. Okay. So I have over here couscous with pine nuts. I really like using the Near East because like I said, I'm very lazy in the kitchen and I want to avoid as many steps as possible. I just want it to taste good. And so I like using these boxes. They're amazing. And the, um, the girl in me that always wants to be on budget, they're, they're really affordable. But you can easily use your own, you can make your own um, couscous and then add some pine nuts if you want. Okay. So now I just want to show you, I'm going to, your, I like to serve this in, um, in a larger, shallower dish, as opposed to just throwing everything together in one bowl, and I'll show you why. It just looks really pretty. Obviously, you can definitely just, you know, throw it all in a bowl, and it will still taste good, but I really like the way this looks instead. So I'm just gonna, on the base of your dish, you're gonna, hold on, I just wanna add, here you go. Wanna make sure you guys can see it. Okay, so you're just gonna kinda like spread it out, so that's gonna be the base. Next up, I'm going to take chickpeas and layer that on top. And it's so simple. It's going to be yummy and it's going to look good too. Okay, see, you're just kind of, just going to kind of like mix that on top a little bit. So you've got that layer of the couscous, so you can have the layer of the chickpeas. And next up, we're going to layer this on top. See how pretty that looks? <laughs> it looks so pretty and, it, and so simple. I love how, um, you know, we're, I'm always looking for recipes that are easy to make, that taste good. And I love that these are, are even ones that you talk about uh, using for entertainment, you know, like when you're entertaining people. Um, are the chickpeas canned? Yes, yeah, I just used canned chickpeas but if you have a preference for a different type you can go for it um i like them they taste great and they're easy so <laughs> and what okay, about so i just uh, want to show you oh please please um that looks amazing i'm going to show you how to top it and the top is going to make it look even better yeah <laughs> can you make this with quinoa oh, oh absolutely you could use any grain um i you could do brown rice if you want quinoa um, 
barley. Like if you have a preference for a specific grain, go for it. You basically just gonna want the base. That's you want your favorite grain to be the base. Add a layer of chickpeas on top, and then you're gonna add a layer of the Israeli salad. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to add the dressing. But if you wanted to make this a meal, like I said, with a different type of protein, you can definitely, I would layer on top a grilled sliced chicken, or you can add like hard boiled eggs. I believe in the recipe, I wrote those options. There should, it should be in the recipe. Like I wrote different options for toppings because I really yes. like when people have options in the kitchen. Yeah. So you can add like the grilled chicken. You can do hard boiled eggs. You could do, I personally like love, love feta on top of this or goat cheese. Um, you want tofu cubed tofu would work as well um so many options and then i would just add that, that on top amazing and i'm gonna show you the dressing i'm gonna show you the dressing okay um i don't when it comes to like ingredients there aren't too many brands that i'm particular with this one i happen to love because it tastes great and it's so easy for serving i just want to show you this is not sponsored <laughs> <laughs> i just really like I really like um, I really like this because it's called the Mighty Sesame Company, and you'll see why when I show you how I'm going to just literally directly on top of the salad. I'm gonna do it as opposed to having to like again. See, this is the lazy part of me. Like, I don't want to have to like mix the ingredients in a bowl and then wash that. Um, so I love being able to go directly on top of the actual salad. Um, in this particular recipe, um, it's just going to be topped with some, um, I wrote in the recipe with tahina, um, but I just want to, for anyone who's watching, my absolute favorite, favorite salad dressing is tahina drizzled on top of salad, honey drizzled on top, and um, as long as it's not for a little, for, you know, for people that don't like spice, a little bit of hot sauce on top. Trust me, that combo is like sweet and a little bit spicy and it's my favorite dressing and I do that I, I never use mayo like that's what I'll do for all of my dressings for my my salads okay so I want to show you like literally you're just gonna go over it and then I'm gonna take some za'atar and the za'atar it comes with like sesame seeds inside so do you see how pretty that looks like I feel that looks like so nice and yummy. It does. So it, it looks Sorry. so good. I'm trying to get up close. So it's harder than it looks to like <laughs> show it to you. Can you. What was the name again of the Tahina product? Yeah. Sorry, I'm bringing myself back. Hi. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see the food. Um, oh, here, I think the lighting's better this way. So, oh, yeah. That has a, oh, the, the Tahina is. This over here. So that's my company. Delicious and it's perfect for drizzling over your salad. You oh, see, I, see, I can email you the name. It's Mighty Sesame. And it's just perfect. like I said, it's so convenient um, for dressing your salad because all the, the other ones you have to like stir it together. And then sometimes you have to add some water and lemon juice or um, olive oil to like get the right consistency but this one comes out perfect just as it is um i know this particular recipe doesn't have the addition of the honey or this the the this the hot sauce but i really uh recommend whoever is experimenting in their house um i recommend that you try that because it's such a great combo <laughs> now Amazing. we are going to make my, my favorite part the dessert which i'm most excited for um it's I, I, you see how happy I get with dessert? Um, I have a major sweet tooth <laughs> and I love dessert. And um, for anyone that hosts meals, Palatiac Phobia is real. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar, if um, on a kosher diet, you don't eat meat and dairy together and people wait various hours, but a lot of times you're gonna have to wait before you can get to that dairy dessert after the meat meal. And I love a good creamy cheesecake and um, it's really hard to get a great dessert that's dairy free. And I was very excited with this particular recipe because it really tastes like this creamy mousse cheesecake. It's dairy free, there's no, it's grain free, no refined sugar. I'm using honey, but you can easily swap it for maple syrup. Um, and I know there's a secret ingredient. I don't know who here has already seen the, the, the list, but 
got avocado in it. And a lot of people, they get like freaked out, but trust me, it, it just adds to the creamy texture. Um, and it gives it that key lime green color. And you, you don't taste the avocado. It's so good. Um, this one is like the most complicated from all of them. And it's not even complicated. It's pretty easy, um, but it's so good. And I just want to preface it by saying the crust that I'm going to show you how to make, if you really don't like avocado or for some reason you don't like the, the filling, you can use this for any no bake cheesecake recipe that you want. Um, I've done this for, I don't, I don't even have it on my blog. If you want me, if you want it, you can me message me and I'll send it to you privately. Um, I've done a cashew cream cheese with like a layer of like almost like vanilla cheesecake using the cashew base and then a blueberry layer, all dairy free over this crust and it's heaven. So this crust is perfect for when you want a grain-free crust. I'm going to quickly clear all the other stuff away. And I'm going to show you how to make it. And you can let me know if anyone has questions or if you're writing anything. Uh, someone so once said that they, that they already printed the dessert recipe and it is on for Shabbat. So I, I'm sure that so she's happy. the only one. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I'm so glad you weren't scared by the avocado. A lot of people get freaked out. <laughs> um, I actually made this recipe. I was doing a live with a mindset specialist. And um, at the time, I made the mistake of saying, well, what kind of recipe do you want? I'll come up with anything you want. Um, and I kind of got freaked out because he was like, tell me specific foods and like their health benefits. And I should come up with that. But he was very specific. He's like, I want a dessert. And it has to have maybe avocado. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because if you follow me, a lot of my, my, my desserts are, you know, very traditional and by traditional, I mean, full of sugar. <laughs> and, um, I was very adamant. Okay. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come up with a delicious dessert using avocado. And I feel like that's the best way to get a healthy dessert that tastes good. Ask a sugar junkie to do it because I, I'm not going to lie. I like sugar. And, um, whenever I come up with a recipe that is healthier, it's going to taste good. Okay. Somebody so I'm going to move. Uh, somebody commented that that they use mayo or avocado for most uh, uh, desserts instead of uh, of, of oil um, or maybe applesauce. There's some people who oh, yeah. are, who like to use applesauce, so we're we're excited to know that avocado can work too. Yeah, I know. It's, there, yeah, you can do a lot of avocado because it really once you're mixing it with the other stuff, it kind of it doesn't really have a very strong flavor on its own. So it's actually really great. Now I oh. kind of, if you notice the thing, I lined up the ingredients together on a sheet, a baking sheet for each dish, because I want you to see how easy it is. Minimal ingredients, like each recipe that we made fit on a little baking dish like this. Um, because it is so easy to cook up a great tasty meal and you don't need a lot of ingredients. You don't have to spend money. Um, okay. So first off, we are going to make the crust. So traditional cheesecake crust is going to have a cookie crisp combined with margarine and sugar. And it's amazing how we're going to get that using this over here. So this is a mixture of the crust is all it's going to be is pitted dates and the cans. That's it. Now I'm going to, I'm just trying to move everything around because I want you guys to see See it as I do it. Oh, they're perfect. Well, actually, I don't know if this is gonna. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, great. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that it would fit. Okay, so you're just gonna pulse together. Oh, Nina, there's a little bit of trouble yeah. with you. Um, and then there's also a question about coconut milk or coconut cream. Uh, the recipe you mentioned. Oh, I'm gonna get to... Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Hold okay. On. Thanks for reminding. I'm showing you. I just went to my fridge to um, bring out the coconut to show you what I used, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. I just want to show you first the crust, and then I'm going to show you. Um, okay, so I'm just going to fill it up, and almost there, guys. Almost there. <laughs> We're just so excited. Okay, so it's gonna get loud. Bear with me. Um, 
you're just gonna pulse it together until it becomes a uh, like crumbly texture. Sorry guys. <laughs> Should I mute myself? Is it too loud? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do it a little bit more, but okay, I'm gonna do a little more and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like, what it should look like. Sorry, <laughs> of course that has to happen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, perfect. I think that should work. I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then I'm going to talk about the coconut cream. See? Is that one cup of dates? Because the recipe says that, but it, it looks like a little bit more than that. It's, oh, so it's, two, it's, it's one cup of dates and one cup of pecans. Got it. Um, and can you use the pecans, can you use a different nut? You can use walnuts. Um, I'm trying to think. As of now, I can confirm wal walnuts and pecans. I never like to say to use something that I haven't actually done before. So I've done it with pecans. I've done it with walnuts. Um, I haven't used any other nut, but you could definitely try and let me know. <laughs> These, uh, those two just specifically work. Okay, so here. Um, I'm using this, the amount that I, the, the, the cup of each is going to fit like a small baking dish like this or a round one, like the shape, you know, that you would use for like a traditional cheesecake. If you want to make it into like a nine by 13, just double it. So I would do like a nine by 13, I'd probably do like two and a half cups of the dates and two and a half cups of the pecans. And if you're not a date fan, is there something else that you can use instead of the dates? are other types of like grain free you could use i mean if you want to do something completely different um you can use any like forget the pecans and forget all of that then you can use um any type of like grain if, if you want it specifically grain free you can use any type of grain free cookie what i've actually done is for pace off here you're just gonna like literally press it down um, and then I like to take the edge, you see, like that, and just kind of press down on it. Yeah. Um, you can use now, or fork, a knife, spatula. Um, could you use, could you potentially use figs? Um, yes, potentially. Again, I never like to say use it 100% if I haven't done it in a recipe. Because um, if I tell someone that I'm to make something and it's gonna come out, then it's gonna for sure come out. If I haven't done it, I feel like that could work. Um, but what I was gonna say is for Passover, when I make something grain-free, I've done macaroons, crushed up. Um, I have a recipe for that. Um, and there, I mean, once you wanna like use something else, there's so many different options. For this particular recipe, I use this combo. Right, right. So here it is. I'm just gonna press it down, and then you're gonna put it into the fridge or freezer. Let it harden up while you make the filling. Now I'm going to show you how to quickly rinse that out. And I'm going to show you um, that delicious creamy pea lime filling. Okay, so here I've got that lined up. There you go. You see? Okay, so now here I'm going to move this here so you can see it. Okay, so you're going to clear out that and we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in. So I'm going to put in the avocado. I'm gonna show you what I use for the coconut in a minute. Let's do that one last. Got your honey and vanilla to make it sweet with like a little bit of sweetness. Vanilla. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the coconut now. Okay, so, so to get the coconut 
cream slash coconut milk, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a can of coconut milk. This happens to be one, one I, I use a few, but this is one of my favorites. This one, it's Roland Classic Coconut Milk. And you don't wanna use the light. That's really important. When you wanna get the fat, the coconut cream on top, you don't wanna use the light. You're gonna take this and keep it in your fridge overnight. I, no joke, always have a minimum of like five of these cans in my fridge. Because if I'm not using it for this dessert, I'm using it to make coconut whipped cream which by the way is delicious. So you're gonna keep this in your fridge. And when you open it the next day, this is what's gonna be on top. This, see that liquid hardens overnight in the fridge and it becomes this coconut cream. You're gonna scoop this out. There's gonna be a little bit of like a water, the coconut water looking inside the can. You can use that for a smoothie so that doesn't go to waste. Um, but this is what you're gonna to wanna to use. Now, while we're on the topic of this, I take this over here and I'll take a blender and whip it up into coconut whipped cream. That's what I use for all of my desserts for the holiday season. I have a recipe for um, apple pie rugelach and I serve it with cinnamon whipped cream. This is, I use this, I whip this and then you can add some cinnamon if you um, if sugar is not an issue, you can always add some powdered sugar, but if you want to keep it sugar free, whip this up and add some cinnamon. And the cinnamon helps to like mask that coconut flavor. I'm not going to lie, it still has like a coconut flavor, but it's so delicious. And I will eat this once it's whipped, scooped with, from, with a spoon. I'll just like eat it like that. Um, so that's what I'm using for this recipe. That was, you had a, someone had a question right before about uh, yeah, well, they were just uh, wanted to know what the difference was um, in the recipe because it says uh, coconut milk in one spot, but coconut cream in another. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to update that. I apologize um, because the can, it's a can of coconut milk. So you're going to want to get one can of coconut milk and then you're going to want to use that. Um, but I will update that. I'm not sure if I told you this recipe is not on my blog. The first time I'm sharing it with anyone is with you guys, or Shara. So, well, so I need yeah. to update that. That's that little mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> whoever for, wants the rest. <laughs> we're very we're yeah. uh, excited to be uh, to be trying it out. Okay, so now we're going to get so this stuff over here, like the coconut and the avocado, is going to give it that creamy texture to get that key lime flavor, which I'm obsessed with. I love key lime, anything. But also what I love about adding the, the, the key lime is that it kind of ma it masks the coconut and it masks the other ingredients that are in it. So the lime juice and zest of two limes. Um, and now we're gonna mix it together until it's smooth and creamy. I'm so excited. Question. <laughs> One more question about the coconut milk. Um, can you use <laughs> almond milk instead? Okay, so I think you said, someone had asked me that before. Um, and I think I gave you that same answer, which is what I always say when people ask like questions to change the recipe. I have only made this recipe using coconut milk. It's definitely possible that it'll taste great using like maybe oat milk or um, instead of almond, I would say maybe soy. Like I feel like it would need like a, like a thicker milk. Um, almond is kind of thinner. I don't know though. Um, you can try it and let me know. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, because I've, I've done it this way and, and this way I can say for sure 100% it comes out. I haven't tried it with the other ones. Um, but if you are going to try it with a different one, I would do either oat milk or soy milk. And if the, and if you don't want to keep it dairy free, then you can always use like some heavy cream. Um, but yeah, so this over here, I just want to make sure you guys see it. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna mix it together until it's nice and creamy. And then we're I'm gonna add it and then I'm gonna get loud again. Sorry guys. I'm just gonna mix it till it's nice and creamy. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Okay. I get really excited about dessert. Can you tell? I'm like, <laughs> hold on. I 
also have to say, I find it strangely satisfying when I use this machine. <laughs> What, love, what, what is it. that, um, the, what is that called? Like, a, is it, does, what's the brand? Oh, oh, uh, don't eat, let me see if I have, oh, this is, uh, this, they have it like, um, Cousinart, um, this one's Ovente actually, um, but they have it in any, uh, like any Ross or Target or anywhere. It's just, I have a really big one that I am extremely lazy and I don't use because there's a lot of stuff to clean with it. So, this yeah, is so, I love it's just mini. I know it looks like it's like the perfect size. Um, it really is. Um, by the way, if you want to know, I'm, I'm telling you, if, if whoever's not following me, if you want to know how to do things in the kitchen the easiest way, simplest way, follow me because as much as I love food, hold on, I'm gonna bring myself back. I feel like I'm not, I feel like I'm not, oh, okay. As much as I love food. I'm not joking when I say I'm lazy in the kitchen and I will find the easiest way to make it. So um, now that we have it, we've got the filling, we've got the crust, I'm gonna show you how to layer it. And then you're gonna put it in the fridge, uh, freezer and let it harden. I actually have it, I did that already, so I could show you what it looks like and I'm gonna show you how to serve it. Which is- There optional. were a couple, a couple of questions before we take that next step. Um, somebody wanted to know if other fruits could be tried instead of lime. Uh, you could do lemon. Um, if you want uh, to keep it like that tart. If not, uh, blueberry. I feel like blueberry would work. Um, I mean, honestly, you could try it with like strawberry, raspberry, um, any of any any fruit really. Just blend it together. Um, but if you want to stick with like that, the tart, um, either the lime or the lemon. Um, yeah, but you can definitely, I feel like, I feel like blueberries would work. And one other question going back to the milk. Yeah. Does the coconut, you had said that the coconut milk becomes solid like a cream after being refrigerated overnight. Um, the almond milk or oat milk wouldn't do that. Is, is there something that you would do to make it a thicker cream? cream in that case right. you would use a, an alternate milk exactly so, yeah, so that's, why I don't, so I, that's why I don't honestly that's why I was saying I can't honestly say that it would work with the other ones um if you want to experiment with it you could but I do think it's important because this is not using like essentially what we're doing is we're trying to make it um like a cheesecake and so instead of cream cheese and heavy cream we're gonna use the coconut cream combined with the avocado and that gives it like that thick consistency. Um, if you really don't like coconut, message me because like I was saying earlier, I have a recipe for cheesecake where, again, it's, it's a different recipe though, it uses cashews. Mm. And you pulse that together and that makes it super creamy. Um, I would suggest, honestly, like, so, yeah, I mean, instead of changing this recipe around completely, I would just use a different recipe, and I would, like, do something like the cashew recipe, um, which I have a really great one. Like I was saying earlier, I did a, using this exact crust, um, layered, using cashews and a couple of other ingredients, um, one was a layer of vanilla, and then there was a layer of blueberry on top, and it was super delicious and creamy, um, so message me. I'm not sure who asked the question, but let them know they can message me and I'm happy to share that recipe with them. Um, that recipe is not even on my blog. It was some, I made that recipe for a friend who, um, I have a friend who was on a special diet and they weren't allowed to have sugar and they weren't allowed to have grains and they weren't allowed to have like a dairy and a bunch of stuff. And it was Shavuos. And I was like, okay, now that I'm back to talking, I'll bring it back up. I am cute. <laughs> I keep going back and forth. Um, and I was like, it's Shavuos and everyone deserves to eat a delicious cheesecake. So I made them that cheesecake and it's really great. I haven't even updated it on the blog yet. So feel free to message me and I'm happy to share the recipe with you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you the next step now. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's it. That's it. We want to see the next step Let's go for it. I'm going to leave now back to the food. <laughs> I, I feel like I got to figure out next time around like a better way of like going back and forth. I've never worked so hard before. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll see you soon. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure you guys see. So you got you could see it. Yes. Okay. So uh, we've got that crust. Now we're gonna take the mixture that we just combined, and 
It literally has like a smooth, can you, oh, I'm gonna bring it up close because I'm wanting to see. Do you guys see? Yeah, it's very creamy. It's super creamy. And it has this really wonderful lime smell and taste. I'm definitely licking the spoon after. <laughs> it's so good. Like even just like, just like that, it's delicious. Okay, so you're just gonna pour it on top, that's it. Um, here. Wow, that's amazing. Just like comes right out. It's super creamy. It's super creamy. And it almost tastes like a, you know, like a cheesecake mousse. Here, you're just gonna spread it over. I love the lime zest in this. I'm like, I don't know if anyone here is obsessed with lime like I am, but I love anything lime and tart. And I love it throughout this mixture. Okay. Okay, so that's it. You're just gonna like spread that over. Okay. I'm gonna take I'm gonna taste a little bit now. Mmm. Okay, wait, you don't understand. This is so good. Is there anyone actually making this right now? It doesn't look like it. Um, no. Oh. oh my gosh, it's so good. It's literally <laughs> so good. But I think they will be after watching you make it. <laughs> I just want to say, I'm not serving anyone right now, which is why I'm licking the spoon and it's going directly in the sink. I feel like any people will be scared now to come over when I'm posting. <laughs> I don't generally lick the spoon. But this, I just want you to see it in case you feel like she doesn't actually eat it or it's not really good because there's avocado in it. It is heaven, super creamy. And you don't taste avocado, like you really just taste lemon, really good lemon zest. Okay, so you've got this. And now you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it in the freezer. And that's it, you're gonna put it in the freezer. It's gonna get, um, then I'm going to part it in the freezer until it looks like this. Oh, wow. Look at that. See, you do, I'm trying to like, here, can you see the layer of, see the bottom is the layer of the, it's how there's, I put, there's a, such a thick layer. See, that's how thick and creamy it is. It's hard to even see the bottom layer, the crust. But do you, are you able to see how it literally looks and holds up like cheesecake? Like cheesecake. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to show you, there are, here, I'm just going to, I want to, oh, sorry, I want to show you, can you, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can serve this. You can technically take this as it is, cut squares, and serve it with coconut whipped cream using this, like I told you before. And then I would, if you're going to do that, like simple and yummy, I would, cut it into squares, put a dollop of the coconut whipped cream, and then I would add some lemon zest on top. I would just shave some lemon zest. I'm not gonna do that now because I'm showing you a different way, but just for anyone watching, I use this at home, and I, I would literally just do that, okay? Well, actually, sorry, wrong direction. Do that. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I got distracted, I was watching the screen. <laughs> Don't do it the other way, do it this way. Um, that's all you would do, just like, fresh lemon zest, some of the coconut whipped cream, and it's super simple and yummy. But I've got a major sweet tooth. I've got a sweet tooth, and I want to show you how to make it, just some, some extra wow factor, especially if you want to make it for like Rosh Hashanah or Sukkot, and we have a bunch of guests. You're going to take dark chocolate. Now, you, you can get, especially because I know, you know, we want to be health conscious with the sugar. You can find dark chocolate that's sugar-free, dairy-free, melt that. I like to, see how nice and creamy it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when you're gonna melt it, add a little bit of oil to the chocolate. If you don't, the chocolate's gonna harden right away. Um, and you can add some coconut oil if you want, um, you know, keeping it all healthy. Um, so that is some melted chocolate. Okay, this is my fun, this is the fun part. <laughs> um, Literally, you're just going to splatter this on top, and then I'm going to add some crushed pecans because we've got that already in a little bit. Um, you can also add some raspberries. Shout out to Alana, my friend, who gave me that idea. Um, I was showing this to her earlier, and she's like, that looks delicious. And she said, that would look so pretty with raspberries. And I was like, you know what, girl? You are right. I'm going to do that next time. Um, so 
I'm just gonna show you. It's like simple little step, but it makes it look so much prettier. Okay, so you're just gonna take the dark chocolate and drizzle it over. It looks so, it looks so fancy. Right, it makes it look pretty. And then also it's just gonna serve as a way to keep the, you can put as much or as little as you want. I will dump the whole thing on. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> um, and then you're gonna add some of the crushed. You could crush it more if you want and get it like super small. Um, but I like having like slightly big pieces. I like that texture because the actual, the actual uh, like mixture, the cheesecake is super creamy. So I really kind of like the crunch on top. Right. Look at that. Oh, it looks I'm amazing. I'm gonna bring it so you guys can see. And that's it. So you don't have to do it this way. You can definitely keep it plain um, and serve it with the, the coconut whipped cream. And um, that's also really yummy. But this is just like, I feel like this is so yummy and yep, and like it looks pretty. There were um, so bring it to the table. I recommend if you're gonna bring this to the table, don't tell people that it's like avocado coconut cheesecake. Say key lime cheesecake. Enjoy <laughs> and see if they can spot the healthy ingredient in it. It's I'm gonna see if I could slice it. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I could cut it to show you what it looks like. I did have it out because I was um. I did have it out because I was, uh, I wanted to have it out in time to show you guys. So it might be slightly melted. In general, you want to keep this in the freezer until right before serving. How long do you usually keep it in the freezer? It, uh, you mean how long, oh, how long does it last in the freezer? No, no, how long do you put it in for the, into the freezer before you take it out and serve it? Oh, it's going to need like a couple hours to get hard. Okay to firm up and then it defrosts pretty quickly. Like we'll see right now, like I took this out right before I started this um, and it, see it's already kind of melted. So I recommend keeping this in the freezer until right before serving um, because now it's already, it defrosts really fairly quickly. Like ice cream guys, but I'm just trying to cut it cause I want to show you. I want to show you what it looks like. Okay, hold on. This is making a mess. One second. <laughs> Here. I'm going to try and bring this up close. Can you guys see? <gasps> okay, that made it. Okay, I'm trying so hard not. To, you know what? I was trying so hard to like, I'm just going to do it with my fingers and show you. Look, see? Yes, you can see like the thin layer of the crust at the bottom. Yeah. Crust, and then it's got that like cheesecake on top. And like I said, you want to keep it in the freezer right before serving. This is what it looks like when it's out of the fridge for like an hour. So it's still yeah. pretty good, but um, it definitely defrosts. It defrosts uh, really quickly. Um, and that's that's dessert. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Nina. Uh, those recipes, I loved how simple they were and how. Um, how just, uh, you know, how easy they are to make and, and have such a beautiful spread for your table. Um, you know, it's just, it's really easy. no, really just a wonderful um, addition to our cook, our, our cooking repertoire. Um, I want to remind everybody to, uh, you know, that you follow Nina at Kosher in the Kitchen on Instagram, check out her cookbook, the Simply Kosher Cookbook. We're putting links in the chat. Um, I want to thank um, Nina for sharing her story with us about how she came to cooking and about her mom. Um, it's just really, you know, so touching that you shared it, um, that with us. And I also want to thank Michelle again for sharing her inspirational story and giving us the reminder to go take care of ourselves and get our annual screenings and mammograms. Um, please take a moment to fill out a brief evaluation survey that's linked in the chat box now. Um, evaluations really do inform our future programming. So thank you so much for taking the time to fill it out. It's like a 30 second survey. We'd love for you to stay connected with Share It via social media on Facebook or Share It Official on Instagram, where we post about events like these, program updates and fun ways to get involved. Please never forget that Share It is here for you and your loved ones during this time. 
Sharshara provides emotional support, mental health counseling, and other programs designed to help navigate you through the cancer experience. All are free, completely private, one-on-one, -on -one, and our number is 866-474-2774. You can also email us at clinicalstaff at sharsharet.org. Our social workers and genetic counselor are available to you. Please, you are our priority. Never hesitate to reach out. We're all gonna get through this together. Finally, I wanna let you know that we have several exciting webinars on a wide range of topics planned over the next few months. Our next webinar is on August 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Please join us for Fertility 101, what you need to know about fertility before, during, and after treatment with Dr. Botsheva Lerner Maslow of Extend Fertility. And I also wanna mention our next Star Share It in the Kitchen program, A Taste of Autumn with Pamela Saltzman, which will be happening on Monday, September 13th at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Please check out our website regularly to see what topics are coming up. The link is in the chat. You can also access the recordings and transcripts of all of our past webinars on our website. From all of us at Share ShareIt, thank you so much for joining us today and have a wonderful rest of your night. And Nina, there's so many uh, comments in the chat. I hope that uh, you can see just people who love the recipes and oh, follow you. They're really- uh, I didn't even so. look at it the whole time I was looking at the food. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> Now there's a lot of people thanking you for the recipes and for being here tonight. So we really appreciate it. Um, so I feel bad. I'm seeing the messages now in the, more, in the beginning. Planes from here. Nina's iPhone. <laughs> Well, also, I can't, uh, yeah, I'm I see only the, the questions now, but um, just if anyone has any questions afterwards or if anyone messages you, please let them know 100% to feel comfortable to message me on Instagram or email me. Um, if they want like a more a quicker response, Instagram is the best way. Um, and I'm so happy to help with any recipe questions that they have. Awesome, thank you so much. And um, and I know my colleague was busy taking notes throughout the, the program. So we will be sending out our recommendation, your recommendations and tips along with the recording to everybody tonight. So um, you know, I'm it, gonna update that, oh sorry. And then I'm gonna update it. I feel bad, I didn't realize I'm gonna update the, the milk slash cream. Um, Cause I realize now that that can be confusing. Did I write in, did I expect specify in the actual recipe um, the step about how to put it in the fridge overnight and scoop out that cream part? Um, no, that part's not in the recipe. So we'll talk, I'll, I'll contact so you. Oh no, don't worry. We'll, we'll talk and we'll add it to the, um, to the final uh, email that goes out with the, the, all of the, the recording and all of the rest of the information about the recipes in the program. And I guess the most important thing is let everyone know they can message me. They shouldn't be shy. If they have any questions, I'm here to help. Well, thank you. Uh, we're, we are really um, we're so glad that you were here tonight. So thank you. I know, me too. Me too. I'm really um, happy. Uh, like I told you, my, I don't know if I told you or I think I mentioned to someone, my mom, um, my sister, Debbie, Debbie um, spent the last year with my mother. Uh, she was her caretaker pretty much. And she said that she would be like in bed with my mom resting and my mom would be scrolling on the Shasharit group. <laughs> I guess, do you guys have a Facebook group or support yeah. group or something? Yes, we have a Facebook Yeah, so uh, she said my mom uh, very much, um, yeah. So I feel like she was, she's here <laughs> um, enjoying the demo. So I, I love that. I love that. Okay. Do you guys need anything else for me? No, I think we're, we're all good. We, um, I'll be in contact with you and so we can just get all of that, those materials together and then we'll send them out to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Nina. You, Nina. Uh, Nina. <laughs> I see you there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Have a Nina. wonderful day. Have you too. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye everybody.